Tyrese Maxey is a born scorer. Certain players just have that knack and he's worked his way up like most of us have to and is now a super high volume scorer. What I love most about Maxey is that he's actually a super simple scorer who yes, can get in his bag, but most time just scores off situations that make the game easy for him, which means that you can apply this breakdown to your game better than almost any other NBA star. Let's get to it. So one thing that you'll notice is that he almost always shoots as the first option. Now, I'm not saying he's taking bad shots or he's a ball hog or he's not working for better shots, but if he has a good look at a three, he doesn't pass it up much. This is simple, but does a few things. Number one, obviously I'm not sure with him in his mind, but for many players that I've talked to, this helps prevent overthinking. If you know you're a good enough shooter for this, and if you know that if you have an open look, you're letting it fly. There's no, damn, do I shoot? Do I drive? No, he's letting it fly. Number two, it makes the defense far more susceptible to hezzies, fakes, and even just getting smoked off of aggressive closeouts, something that we'll talk about in a bit. It just creates a stronger magnetic pull to him, which makes it so much easier for him to attack. And I think if you look for shots like this more often, they're there more than you think. But obviously, all of this is predicated on him being a knockdown shooter in the first place. And like I said in the intro, one thing that I love about Maxi's game is that most of his shots work in the flow of an offense, which is much more applicable to most people watching this and more practical for a budding star like him to fit into any offense. He's not clearing out to go iso ball for all of it, but instead coming off ball screens. working in transition. Scoring simple buckets off of handoffs. Like here, where instead of going ISO with no advantage on the defense, he tosses it to Embiid and follows into a quick get action to make it a bit easier. Something that he does a lot, as you can see here. And then also just simply finding space on the perimeter to attack closeouts. And this is where he makes a lot of his money. On closeouts, timing is absolutely vital. If you waste even a half second, the defense is in a better position to defend, and you've wasted an easy opportunity. Maxi seems to really understand this, and you can even see here that he's taking this negative acceleration step as he's catching the ball. It's not like he's catching, reading, and then going, because that's too slow, especially in the NBA. He's either creating momentum now, so that defender has no chance, or actively faking a shot where he's gotta be a bit more patient, but bringing that defender out towards him even more. If you do these right, it's gonna be damn near impossible to not get an advantage most times. Also, as he starts attacking the rim, he's really explosive getting downhill, but he also finds a nice balance of speed and control. Like he can get up to a super high speed here, but then he also is able to slow down a bit at the last second to make sure he's not at a speed far too high for him to control his jump or his momentum on the finish. Cause I don't care who you are, if you go 110% speed to the rim, you're often putting yourself in a suboptimal position to finish. And with him attacking from this far out, he's developed a feel for the speed that's just right to give him enough momentum without going past the limit. So you'll see him taking these big strides, especially in transition, keep the majority of his speed but also pump the brakes just a bit to keep control. One thing he also does very well is finish through the rim. In other words, it's like the rim is pulling him towards it and he's really making an effort to finish with his momentum going directly towards the rim rather than fading away. It's not always the thing to do. Of course, sometimes you'll get into touch shots where you're kind of floating away from the rim. But in many cases, it helps him create contact more effortlessly get closer to the rim to finish, and use momentum to his advantage. That is, unless he pulls out a floater, which is a huge part of his game and helps him play a bit smarter than going at big shot blockers every time. And one thing I really like about his floater work is that once again, he's able to really decelerate here from these high speeds. This is probably even tougher than doing this on a finish. And as a faster guy who's often attacking from deep, being able to plant his foot in the ground and get off effortless floaters with the touch to actually make them is impressive. And this right, right, same foot, same hand floater goes crazy. Especially when going right, it just feels much better than going off the left. and helps you decel a bit easier, and also the ball seems to just kind of flow up into the air a lot easier. Go try it, you'll see what I'm talking about. Plus, more practically, most defenders aren't expecting this since it's a same foot, same hand finish. And getting back to finishes at the rim, even the ones that seem crazy, well they kind of are, but he's never really out of control. He has a great gift to find stillness in the air, so he's keeping his eyes on the rim, he's staying composed, he's hanging in the air to make sure that he's able to find that rim, and then still make the finish, even with contact. And this is tough, but it's something that we can train. Also note the unpredictability of these. Like one, he'll raise up with them and go straight to their body. 
On another one, he'll barely jump, but chip the defender with his shoulder right before the jump. Then on another one, he'll jump more to the side. So every time he's keeping them guessing, he's not always just going straight up. He's not jumping the same direction. And this makes it super tough to defend for shot blockers versus someone who's trying to go up aggressively and athletically right at the defense every time. And in terms of anything from floaters to shorter mid ranges, he makes a lot of tough shots. And most of this is due to a couple qualities of any good shot maker. Number one being patience. Like watch how he floats in the air on all of these shots, not as much to create separation, but more so to buy himself time to find the rim, find control and composure, and then shoot it. Waiting these extra few milliseconds in the air may feel a bit weird at first, but often helps players develop just enough composure to make the shot versus just kind of chucking it up. As well as the confidence to just trust it, which we'll talk about soon. Then, if we want to talk about his off the dribble work, it's pretty simple bag work. I think the rule of thumb for most efficient scorers off the dribble like Maxi is that they don't take more dribbles to get to a shot that they can pretty much get any time. Like, he can get this shot pretty much whenever. So he doesn't waste time, effort, or dribbles getting into it, it just makes it happen. Again, this is way more realistic in the NBA, but something I've noticed. But at the same time, you also notice that most of these are with under five on the shot clock or maybe a heat check, which are really the main times he'll shoot shots like this. And trust me, to shoot these, you gotta earn them with simpler stuff like he's done a great job with. Anyways, he's constantly working to get momentum in his favor, even attacking straight off bringing up the court so that he'll have that head of steam immediately, which often gets defenders backpedaling and immediately on their heels. But just because he has the momentum doesn't mean he goes 100% speed. And in many of these situations, it's a natural reaction as a defender to flip your hips. And because he's able to get downhill so explosively from a standstill, he constantly has defenders' hips turned pretty early in this recovery effort, which means a lot of opportunities to snatch back. And as any hooper, but especially a faster player, if you can get the hips turned like this, your options exponentially increase. Then it's just about making this read second nature. Like these two plays look almost identical here, but one he has the step and keeps going. And then on this one, he reads the defense taking a deeper angle and snatches back. You can even fake too, like he does here. And a lot of these, since he's attacking from so high, are for threes. But if he's not behind the line on that snatch, most times he'll get there with this extra touch step back. Whether he picked it up from Harden or he Ben had it, he's great at getting just a bit of extra separation with it and adding on an extra point, a three versus a two. And notice how quick it is here because rather than waiting for both feet to get set and then starting the shooting motion, He's already beginning this upward motion as this second foot is coming down, which is essential to the speed of this. And overall, he's great at just getting to space. It sounds oversimplified, but if you watch all of these clips, he's not making moves to make moves. He's just navigating the court, trying to get to space. Maybe that space is on the perimeter in transition, so he keeps it simple, stays in space, and gets an open three. Even off ball, and honestly especially off ball, he's constantly looking to occupy the most open space possible. So ghosting a screen into this pocket of space, spacing from the ball handler to get the most open shot, this makes the game so much easier to think about because you're just analyzing, okay, where's the most open space right now, or where's it gonna be, and then just getting there. And then lastly is the energy he plays with. Yes, he has your standard energy of just playing hard and passionately, but there's also this confident energy that you can just see watching. Like it looks like every shot is to make it. He's not thinking twice about shooting even tough shots. He's attacking downhill at super high speeds with no doubt in his mind. At least that's what it looks like. And I'll tell you right now that there's a pretty strong correlation between great scorers and having this energy. It's a skill to develop like anything else, but it's definitely one that's worth it to train, just like your ball handling or shooting or any of that. And I'll be talking about how to do that in a video very soon. So as always, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hopefully there's something here that you can apply into your game. I think there is. So go out, give it a shot. Let me know what you think.